Hello to all you hip skips out there. And welcome to the jungle. Join Disney historian David Dr. Skipper Marley and art director and crooner Trevor Kelly as these former jungle skips explore the world of Disney, pop culture and theme parks. But hold on tight because just like a jungle cruise, their conversations often head deep into uncharted waters. Now, grab a seat and enjoy Expedition 20, a favorite park treat, the food and four loco fest, and arguments in Agrabah. Move it up, Skips. We are spitting distance from a Tiki Oasis. Yeah, we are. Once this aired. When is, uh, so this this goes live on the first, and when does Tiki Oasis, when's that Thursday? When's that first Thursday? What date is that? It is, I don't know. I'm going to say the same thing more times you were delaying it for my benefit oh. <laughs> tiki oasis starts the third although technically it starts august 2nd like the night that, that's the wednesday the it wednesday starts preview night of okay yeah which i've never done no i've, I've never uh had I've, the pleasure i've always wanted to go down early but then i have all my vending stuff yeah you don't want to go to that because I, I i've heard that that's where they have the uh the ritualistic sacrifice to make sure tiki oasis goes well that's why i'm trying to go oh, okay i want to see it happen <laughs> you go you're not a virgin anymore so you'll I'm be not, safe i'm not recently if this, if this has been if we'd were, if it had been a year ago man <laughs> woo, just under the radar that's right just over the cross the finish line whatever the word is yeah so just in a couple of days we're heading I down to wait. san diego it's gonna be great please join us at the uh, jungle line do you want to plug your talk yeah, my talk is Thursday, uh, the very first day of Tiki Oasis, I believe at either 1 or one thirty. Just show up at 1. Okay. And uh, I'm talking on the plants of Disneyland Ooh. and Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Awesome. So it's about how, how the plants were put in, how many plants were brand new, like like 80% of the plants at Disneyland were brand new, non-native to California. Really? Like some of the first time they were ever used in America was in Disneyland. So I talk about that. I talk about... So it's a lot of it's Jungle Cruise, but I talk about other places like Tomorrowland, how the plants are edible. And I talk about that weird quilt thing. Oh, yeah. It's in the storybook from land. From the silly symphonies that yeah. nobody knows what that is anymore. Nobody has a clue which one that's from. <laughs> and so I'm going to be bringing some of my actual Jungle Cruise plants. Oh, awesome. Uh, that I will have to sell. I think I only have like four because it takes a while to grow them. But they're from the top of the Cambodian shrine. Oh. I gave one to my friend, uh, Keith Hart, from TikiCon last year. Nice. Because he's been so nice to me there. So I invited him to the stage. And I gave him a Jungle Cruise plant. This is a real plant. And then his girlfriend's like, give it to me. He'll kill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So, yeah. So, because I love to garden. I love plants. Uh, it's, one of my, it's one of my favorite hobbies and pastimes. Nice. And so I'm excited to share some of my gardening knowledge. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll Maybe I'll stop by now. I wasn't going to. Really? I, I don't care for your talks. Oh, but... you got to come. <laughs> uh, and this one's going to be fun because I'm toning down the uh, just the... The uh, the violent imagery and the racist rhetoric. I've really toned it down this year. I appreciate that. We've yeah. gotten letters. Uh, yeah, lots of letters yeah. and complaints. Yeah, I get letters. You get letters about you. Okay, it's that, weird. That tracks. Yeah, <laughs> I I still get. If anyone's listening, uh, he's got an Instagram too. I get Instagram messages like, "Wow, Trevor was so great." I'm oh. like, you know, he's at the Trevor Kelly. Yeah. I do appreciate you send them my way. I do, and you do tag me and stuff that people tag me. Yes, in. but yeah, uh, the dot Trevor dot Kelly. Uh, please, I'm always thrilled. To, to hear from everybody that's enjoying the things. Yeah. And uh, please don't get offended when I take five days to reply. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And if I can say this one extra special thing about the Tiki Oasis, you'll be able to see Trevor Kelly walking freely. Uh, Yeah. How this exciting is, is that? This is a big development. I didn't get hit by anything yet this year. <laughs> so uh, I'll be moving around like a real person, like yeah, a real boy. Like a real boy. <laughs> no cane, no limp, no, no. nothing. Uh, I can actually make my way up to room parties this year. Yeah. Oh. That was heartbreaking. Uh, I didn't mind most of the stuff during the day, but have to sit. Uh, I, I felt like a like that Japanese dog that was waiting for its owner <laughs> outside the train station <laughs> until it died. That's what I felt like at Tiki Oasis last year. <laughs> All my friends going up to room parties. Yeah, we waved at you. My old nemesis stares. <laughs> We dropped you beverages when we That's had lunch. true. You did. You were very kind. Open your mouth. We're just going to throw beverages at you. <laughs> That'll be fine. Make sure you're following me and Dave on Instagram. Yes. I'm the dot Trevor dot Kelly and yep. at uh, Dr. Skipper Marley. Uh, because each day at Tiki Oasis, two of the days at Tiki Oasis, uh, both of us will be uh, taking over a, a prize drop. Yeah. On the grounds of Tiki Oasis. So you can get some free, cool stuff just for being an avid listener and follower. Yep. And I can give a shout out 
uh, to my wife, Deb. Uh, she's giving a talk at Tiki Oasis this That's year. That's right. She's giving a talk on Saturday, I think, at either 12, the witching hour, or 1 o'clock, the witching hour. <laughs> uh, well, she'll be talking about witches, like little, like scary, spooky stories from Polynesia yeah. and the South Pacific. And she found some creepy ass stories. That's going to be wild. Yeah. So it's like, you know, about Pele and these different gods, but she's like, here's about different spirits and ghosts and, and tales all through the South Pacific. So she, it's going to be fun and gothy and tiki and scary. Can't wait. So that'll be, that'll be a blast. Yeah. So that's Saturday, middle of the day. Uh, check your schedule. And then that night, Saturday night, we will be podcasting it up yeah. live and drunk. Kick off your uh, Saturday night with us uh, before yep. all the bands and the room parties. It's yep. going to be a good way to, uh, to have a, a good start to your evening. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, I forgot to ask last time, and yes. please feel free to, to ruminate on this and we'll edit. Uh, I went to Disneyland recently. I went to we did the Carthay and all that stuff I mentioned in the last podcast. But I forgot to mention, we got one of my favorite foods uh, in the park. I ate all the foods. I ate the Ronto wrap. I had the, the uh-huh. Mickey pretzel with cheese. I, did, I got real fat and sassy with it. But uh, I had my favorite food, and I wanted to know if you have a favorite food in the park as well. I'll go first with mine. Uh, everybody loves a corn dog. Yeah. But pro tip, uh, don't wait in that Main Street corn dog line for your hand-dipped corn dog uh, like a chump. Because that thing gets crazy. I think it's bonkers. That's yeah. a switchback sometimes. Yeah. <clears throat> corn dog castle. California Adventure. Oh. It's still hand dipped, and you have the option of the Hot Link corn dog. Hot Link corn dog. Mm, mm, mm. Really, so good. Really, it's, it's my, it's my of all the corn dogs. It's my favorite. Uh huh. And it's uh, one of my favorite foods at the park. I was trying to guess what your favorite food was. What, I, what would I you was, thought my I was food was? Close. I didn't know. I figured it'd be something fancy. Uh, no, is there like, fancy stuff at the park? Oh, yeah. kind of Carthay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and like. Um, you know, at the what's it called? Bengal barbecue. Um, oh, <laughs> Bengal barbecue. Oh, Bengal barbecue. Bengal barbecue is good. Um, no, the uh, the Bayou, Blue Bayou. Oh, Blue Bayou. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the sit down restaurants. I figured it'd be fancy. Are very but nice. Here's the thing. Uh, for my answer, I love those corn dogs and the red car, but they made them smaller. If Did you they? noticed the the breading itself is big, oh. but the hot dog itself is smaller. Wow. They shrunk the size of the hot dog, <laughs> and yet they made the breading bigger so you didn't notice. So you just think, oh my gosh. Nope. Yep. Because I know, I go, this is smaller. And they're like, no, it's the same. I go, no, it's the same width and length with the breading on, but look how thick the breading is. It's a smaller hot dog. And then I researched it. Yeah, Disney made much smaller hot dogs. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like they made them big, and then when people got hooked on them, it was that executive who just resigned because her husband has health issues. She was a vice president. Oh. She's the one that said, when they were making portions smaller, she's like, well, it's better for guests' waistlines. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, when did they start hiring executives who just insulted their guests just all the time? villains. Right? <laughs> she was a literal, right? Her and Chapek and all those guys were like Disney villains. Like, hey, she's I'm, just skinning Dalmatians while telling people they yeah, should eat less. Eat less food, you fat porkers. <laughs> uh, but also, she's in charge of the money, so why would you insult anybody that's going to give you money? Right. Anybody. Um, so... That was uh, that was my favorite food. But before that, it was the hot dog at the Stage Door Cafe. I loved the Stage Door Cafe. Uh, uh, that's the one next to Golden Horseshoe, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. We'd go in there and 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 get some food. But really, this is this shows you how limited I am. My real, if I could pick one thing to eat, it would be the Bengal barbecue. Those skewers. Oh, those are good. I wish they came with like a side of rice on them. That would be nice. Because it's just like the skewer in a in a little. Yeah. Thing. I'm like, how hard is it to put a scoop of rice in there? What yeah. is that really going to cost you, that's Disney? True. Uh, that's but, always a good solid choice. Stage door is fantastic. It's really good. Yes, stage door was was good. And my favorite place to sit and eat is the Hungry Bear. Hungry Bear is solid. Yeah, the yeah. food's good, but you can sit and have that beautiful view. Yeah. Now it's a beautiful view of the river, and then tourists walking into Star Star Wars Land. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, uh, my favorite thing at Disneyland was that, and then my second favorite thing. Uh, I don't even know if they have it still. Uh, and it was only my favorite thing in that specific moment was we had gotten uh. Hopped up on Four Locos at the Food and Wine Fest. <laughs> we had the Food and Wine Fest. They had Four Locos there? No, you had to leave the park. <laughs> <laughs> this is how bad, this is how, how many bad decisions occurred in one day. We did Food and Wine Festival. We went to a vodka tasting, Ooh. which, fancy. Yeah. Just real smart people, yeah. okay. a, gr- a room full of fancy people. And then uh, us. <laughs> 
and they're talking about it, and, but they make the mistake. They don't hand it out one by one. You have the entire row of vodka samples in front yeah. of you, and you're supposed to listen to them talk about it and, you know, smell and it. Hitting and back, hitting just back. after 15 minutes, I'm like, this is taking too long. Pop, 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 pop. And then we just <laughs> shot it and left. Uh, and we got so drunk. Uh, oh. we left the park, we got a four loco and this is back when the four loco could still kill you. Yeah. Uh, before they changed the formula and thanks a lot. Government. <laughs> the, the rest of the day is like that scene in the Batman where the strobes going off and he's just suddenly in a different spot. That was the rest <laughs> of my afternoon at Disneyland. Okay. Just uh, suddenly I'm back in the park at Coke corner eating, uh, they had a hot dog with mac and cheese on top of it, and it was fantastic. Wow. And I'd come to a moment of clarity, and i go like, where are all my friends? <laughs> and then I see them drunkenly walking down Main Street. And then the next thing I remember is I'm in front of Pirates of the Caribbean with Adam Rotelli yelling at everybody, hanging off of a, a street lamp uh, as people exit the ride, uh, telling them they're all sheep. Uh, so that's a good that, day. That sounds like Adam. <laughs> Excuse good me. day at the park. Good day at the park. Uh, not to, not to, that we planned this because we didn't. Uh, last time I was at Disneyland was uh, almost exactly a year ago. Really? I was with Mr. Kip Hart, oh. and we were drunk. I've never <laughs> been to the park drunk before, ever. Really? Ever. Not, oh, not, it's not, the best. Not even slightly toasted. So we'd gone to Trader Sam's, and we each had a Roy's on purpose, Ooh. and we had other drinks, so we were feeling it. <laughs> and I'm like, we got to walk around. And he, so we went and had, a, we went and had food. Earl's sandwich, and then we went for a long walk, and we're walking between the two parks. And uh, he's like, "Oh man, I'm blocked," because he was still a casserole. He's like, "Oh, I'm blocked out. I can't get us in." I'm like, "It's okay. Besides, I'm nervously drunk. I don't want to go into the park <laughs> this drunk." And uh, and so this girl stops us, who was a plaid. She's like, "Oh my God, Kip, what are you doing?" And she's like, "You guys going to the park today?" He's like, "No, I'm blacked out." She's like, "Oh, that's a bummer. Here, wait right here." And she leaves, and he goes, "I think we're going in the park." Oh wow! And she walks back into. She she comes back, goes, "I'm sorry, you guys lost your tickets. Here's two replacements." <laughs> <laughs> and then walked us into the walked us through the gate. Wow! And I was terrified. Really? Because I was, you know how I, when I'm drunk, I'm like yeah. I'm a drinker. Yeah. I'm like a 13 year old girl. <laughs> so imagine a giant six foot four, 210 pound, 13 year old girl trying to be really cool and calm. <laughs> so I'm like walking down Main Street, going, "Be cool, be." Co-. I've never been scared walking down Main Street really? before. And I was. It was a good. Uh, I'd say a good two hours of me just not realizing I was in no, I couldn't even drive the Autopia cars. Like I was not in control. <laughs> and eventually I kind of came out of it. I'm like, oh, wow, that was terrifying. Really? That's so weird. That's so interesting. Cause I, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do is get a little, uh, toasted over at California adventure yeah. and wander through Disneyland. Wow. It gives it that, uh, that childlike wonder, <laughs> uh, it returns. I always just have that cause I'm highly <laughs> incredibly immature. Uh, I've always wanted to do it while high. I think that would be fun and terrifying. Uh, speaking from experience, yes, slightly terrifying. Going on Winnie the Pooh? Oh, I want to do that. Heffalumps uh, and woozles. <laughs> oh, my God. God. Yeah, we started off uh, a little toasted, and then we introduced uh, a vape pen. Oh, okay. Dis- discreetly away from everybody, because that that is the only thing that uh, is, no matter what happens... My primary concern is to not disrupt a paying family's enjoyment of the park. Oh, yeah. Because that is ingrained in the back of my head. These these people have saved up so much money. The last thing they need is some drunk idiot ruining their day. That is that is cast member life ingrained in you, which it is, is good. It, it's there for me, too. Deeply ingrained yeah. in me. That said, I do enjoy going to the park a little blitzed. Yeah. You know what ingrained that? For me, I was, I was a new skipper, and it was early in the morning and I don't think I've told this story before and you know like when you're when you're loading people and you the boats go so you have a moment to talk to the guests it was this this nice like older middle-aged couple and the woman was in a beautiful like Indian sari oh wow beautiful colors and and I compliment her on her it's so beautiful and the husband's like oh thank you so much we are having the best time here we've been here for five hours and we love it and I'm like it's like nine or ten a.m. I'm like oh we haven't been open for five hours trying to correct he's like no no no. we have been in america for five hours what and I, that's what i said he goes they flew from karachi pakistan he goes we landed at lax we rented a car we dropped our stuff off at disneyland hotel and here we are wow <laughs> he'd been in america for five hours and was on the jungle cruise 
And I'm like, and they were so excited to be there. And so I had a nice chat with them and the boat comes around from Trader Sam's and it's my boat. And my boat partner bumps me out, but I bump him out. So I get to be their skipper. Wow. So I tried to give them like the best thing they, they could ever experience. Uh, so I really like hammed it up for them and they're like, oh, you are so great. And I, so I've, that stuck in my head that whenever I had a day where I'm like, oh God, I got to go work. I'm like, you know what? People literally flew from the other side of the planet yeah. to go here. Did you tell them, don't go anywhere else in America, just leave. <laughs> this is, you started high. I told them, what you want to do after this is you want to go to a town called Stanton, California. <laughs> uh, Beautiful. The jewel. The jewel, crown jewel of Orange County, <laughs> Stanton, right. California. Uh, but it was, it was so that, whenever I was having like a low day, I would think of that couple and yeah. think, wow, people wait their whole lives to come here. Yeah. And you get to be there for that, have that, their excitement became my excitement. Oh, and my energy. And so, yeah, it, it's even when I'm there, that one time drunk, I'm like, you can't ruin this for anybody. You can't. <laughs> so when you see guests act horrible. Yeah. You're like, hey, there's other people. Yeah. That don't want your drama. No, I just, I move through the park like a drunk ghost. Yeah. Uh, and I just enjoy it. It's so fun. Uh, and I, I, we may have shared this, but I'll quickly briefly share, uh, if you are looking for some, uh, boozy fun at the park, me and Jess's uh, favorite thing to do is always, you sneak a little, uh, little bourbon in the park and you get a mint julep, dump it in there, go mm. on the Mark Twain. Fantastic. I have a, a flask belt. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I used to take it to, when I was a professor at a college that did not allow drinking, I wore it to graduation one year under my robe. <laughs> Middle of graduation ceremony, popped it out, took a little shot, put it back in my belt. <laughs> yeah, I belonged there. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I should wear, I should bring that to Tiki Oasis. You should. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, a little flask, a little drinky poo for the day. So, Stage Door Cafe. Back to favorite food. Yes. That was your favorite. Bengal barbecue. Bengal barbecue. For sure. Okay. Um, but here's one one place to eat that gets a lot of crap that I don't think deserves it is Pizza Port. I don't know about their pizza, but, but like their pasta dishes. I thought penne okay. pasta with sausage and garlic bread. Okay. Lo- it's hard to screw that up. Yeah. And so I think it's pretty good. That was, I, I enjoy it. That was always my, you could have to put a reason on the, the no strings attached. That was always my reason I put on it was I ate at Pizza Port. <laughs> and it was so horrible. And nobody ever questioned that. Oh, you wow. ate at Pizza Port? Okay, okay here you go. Okay. Oh, Whatever yeah, you yeah. need. No, but they're, they're pasta and stuff. And it has that huge wall of glass. Where you can see all of Tomorrowland and, yeah. and the Matterhorn in the background. It's a beautiful place to sit. That used to be Mission to Mars, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. So it's. I think it, it gets kind of a bad rap. I don't care for like the ones in Fantasyland, the Village House or whatever it's called now, Bells. I heard, uh, I will say, uh, a friend who worked at the park uh, in that neck of the woods. That was one of the places he said, maybe don't eat there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Maybe don't. That was a long time ago, so maybe it's gotten better. Because now it's Bell's something. Yeah. Yeah. It's the enchanted place, the gray stuff. Yeah, yeah, which is delicious. Uh, uh, don't believe me? Ask, ask those dishes. <laughs> That's so for your, your I, I meant to ask, talk to you about this. Yeah. So for your Disney show. Yes. Which I missed because I was driving down That's right. in the car. Uh, uh, you had it last month. Um uh, By the way, shout out to Teeny Tal and uh, Patrick Barnett for our special guest mm-hmm. that month. So you sang from Princess and the Frog. I didn't. How, oh, you didn't do the song? No. Oh, because I say, so have you watched the movie yet? Here's the thing. Uh, loved that song. Yes. I don't know what it is about, because uh, what was the one I texted you that I was just enthralled with? Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. You yeah. got to dig yeah. a little deeper. Yeah. And uh, now this, now Disney's, now we're on Disney's radar with the podcast because I just sang those couple of little notes. Yep, yep. Gonna, they didn't care before. We're getting a letter now. That's right. Cease and desist. <laughs> uh, enthralled <laughs> with that song. It's fantastic. Yeah. And the one everybody always asks me to do, Friends from the Other Side or Friends on the Other Best Side? Best villain song of any Disney movie. If you don't agree with me, fight me. Find me at Disney <laughs> when I'm drunk and we will fight about it. <laughs> I have listened to that song dozens of times. Yeah. Not one note sticks in my brain for some reason. Okay. I don't know what it have is. Have you watched it? No. Because I remember watching it... Uh, it's it's also one of the scarier parts of any Disney movie. Okay. And Disney's got some scary things, like yeah. Snow White and stuff. This is straight up voodoo monsters and things. Yeah. And he's conjuring all this stuff. We got to watch it. It's, okay. It's great. And um, I enjoyed the music I've heard so far. I just, nothing from that song sticks oh, with me. we got to watch that movie. Okay. By the way, if I may do a little Billy Mays here, just briefly. Yes. Uh, Cocaine? First two- <laughs> Sorry. That's right. That was OxyClean. That's why <laughs> he made a mistake. <laughs> Fun well, fact. Uh, I filmed a pilot in Florida years ago. I was the host of a TV show that never got picked up. And uh, I did a Billy Mays joke 
because uh, they talked about how all of them worked for the Home Shopping Channel and all oh, those okay. space there in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Turns out half of them had worked with them <gasps> and thought what a nice guy he was. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, son of a bitch. Oh, no. So know your crowd before you start throwing out jokes <laughs> about right. people who died. <laughs> Anybody work with Billy Mays? <laughs> yes. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> well, when I was at the Adventurers Club, I, I saw these guys adventurers and doing stuff. I'm like... Okay, so this is not the room to do a joke about that submarine that collapsed at the Titanic. Don't. Or it's the best room. Or it's the best, <laughs> right? Because I thought about it. I thought about it. And then during there, who's been on adventure? Four different guys stood up. I knew so-and-so from that, from the, cr- and oh. they knew him. And a bunch of people were like, oh, he was a great guy. I'm like, okay, yeah, so no. No Titanic <laughs> jokes. <laughs> no. Got to know. Because we have all been there. Yeah. Well, not there, but. <laughs> not down there. No. no, no. But we've all. Yeah. You've said things you shouldn't have said, and you're like, well, I've dug a hole. Yep. That's that's the story of my life. Yep. Yep. I'll just go good kill thing, myself now. Good, well, good thing I'm dull. <laughs> like, I'm a little too big for them to come swinging at me. I'll just going to apologize sincerely. And then, yeah. Uh, really quick, first Tuesday every month, if, if you like good times and good music and good fun uh, on YouTube and Twitch, I do some crooning. Yeah. There's laughter. I can't yeah. even describe it well. It's turned into this weird gumbo of just chaos that's just a blast. So yeah. please join us at 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I love it. That's all I can... Love it, love it, love it. It's been really fun. Back to our previous topic. Yes. Have you ever been to Club 33? I went to the old one with you. Yeah. Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. For food. That I'm was... Not, what's the word? I'm not a fancy boy when it comes okay. to food. I'm yeah. like, oh, I'll go to McDonald's. It's fancy. It's yeah. Scottish, I think. <laughs> uh, but I'll have the McHaggis, please. But it was <laughs> so good. Club 30U was fantastic. And then I enjoyed two beers because back then you couldn't drink at Disneyland. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm having a beer at Disneyland. Yeah. Now you just go to have those nasty drinks at Uga's Cantina. Uh, and... The, the problem with the cantina, and what, when we went this recent time, yeah. uh, you could get in. It was a walk up, like maybe wait five minutes. Nice. I enjoy it, but they give you your first drink. You yeah. have 45 minutes or something in yeah. there. And then they basically say, drink these as quick as possible yeah. and back out into the park. Yep. And if you know what you're ordering, you can kind of steer the ship in uh, the direction of Drunksville. Yeah. Which is, uh, it's it's not how I prefer to imbibe. But I didn't like it as they give you the drink. Okay, what would you like for your second one? Right. Like, order it now so it's ready. Yeah. And I'm like, I hope they, let's just do like an hour, an hour and a half in the cantina. Yeah. Just be it's able like, to enjoy it. I think I think last time I went, the, it was like 14 minutes. Here's your first drink. You have 14 <laughs> minutes. Right. They're like, and if you don't finish, they physically hold you and just pour the, it was like a hazing. <laughs> they, they put a tube in your throat. They inject the second drink into your they artery. Get, they get aggressive. <laughs> That's right. And, uh, yeah. The little robot from Star Tours. Drink it. Drink it. <laughs> you want to get outside? Yes. Drink it. Uh, speaking of, uh, of re-theming things that already exist. Yes. This actually ties in perfectly nice. to a topic that okay. I had. Did okay. you see the article, uh, where, uh, an anonymous Imagineer, which I'm always slightly dubious of, but I, I like, I hope this story is true. Tony Baxter. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, so, anytime it's anonymous imagineer it's, oh, anonymous imagineer tony baxter confirmed I just, it's the only one i can think of at the top of my head <laughs> so there was always that big rumor that okay. uh, the hall of presidents audio animatronic of trump was hillary that they just rethemed the last minute i've heard that rumor yes apparently a cat on a podcast uh threw that question out on twitter yeah anonymous imagineer reached out and confirmed it to him that uh, they had been working on the Hillary sculpt for this and the whole deal for about six months prior to the election. Wow. And uh, uh, Trump wins and they all go, oh, shit. And they just kind of lightly rethemed it and threw a little Trump wig on it. And wow. So that was meant for. And when you see pictures of it side by side, yeah. you, see it, you can tell like, oh, something. yeah, I mean, it's not like Trump's a, a good looking cat, but uh, it looks more like Hillary with a Trump wig on. Than- yeah. Hillary with worse hair. Yeah. <laughs> if you can imagine that. You know, it was interesting that he also mentioned. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if you know this. The energy ride or whatever it was called with Ellen Generous. Oh, finally uh-huh, ended. uh-huh. There are several repurposed Ellen Generous audio animatronics strewn apart, strewn about Walt Disney World. Really? Yeah. Oh, I can totally see that. Yeah. They um, There was a gorilla at the Jungle Cruise from the 50s until the late 70s. So for over 20 years, it was a mechanical gorilla. 
They took it out of the Jungle Cruise. They put it in the Matterhorn as the first abominable snowman. Really? Was that a Jungle Cruise gorilla? They gave him new fur. They updated his animatronics. He was there from the 70s until... I think about 10 years ago, okay. when they redid it again, when he got the brand new, the cool, oh, scary yeah. one, they took him out, and now he's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Really? When you're waiting in the queue to go before you before you get onto the ride, yeah. there's all the stuff everywhere from the collector, but there's a Yeti oh. in a cage, and that's the original 1955 Jungle Cruise Gorilla that's still there. Wow. And Disney does stuff like that, and I freaking go nuts for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I always love that's incredible. I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, I always love that stuff. Like, uh, basically, like America Sings just got strewn about the park. Yeah, all the audio, like the little uh, the little uh, droids and star tours that are fixing stuff. Mm-hmm. Those are some of the dr- like the birds from America Sings. I didn't know that. With nothing they just ripped off all their uh, yeah stuff. It's just and, mechanical things. And why that. not? You yeah. why not reuse them? So you got to figure. Yeah, there's a lot of Ellen DeGeneres. Is, 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 is. What about they do with the presidents? Like Lincoln was really tall, six four. Yeah. So you have to have a taller animatronic. Yeah. If I was, if I ran the Hall of the Presidents, I would, I would, you know, I would, Andrew Jackson, who was like the most slave loving, like he loved having slaves. I would put him right next to Barack Obama just to be a dick. Just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Know. Yeah. Here's yeah. for eternity. You get to stand next to the first black president. Hey, <laughs> like that. Right. You're racist piece of garbage. <laughs> or like two presidents that you knew hated each other. Just yeah. like make them like hold hands on stage. <laughs> Disney can do whatever they want. <laughs> right. Why right? not? They should have just made why the are Nixon and Kennedy holding hands. Oh yeah, they were the whole secret thing. Why were you purpose the uh, the Hillary? Just make all into generous Trump. <laughs> all right, there you just go. Throw it in there. There you go. They're both as unpleasant. <laughs> yeah. I uh <laughs> before we head on to our next topic, I want to take a second to thank all of our wonderful Patreon sponsors yes. that helped make this show possible. Uh I thought I would switch it up this time. I'll say hello to our hip skips. Yeah. That's the five dollar a month people who we know and love. Uh thanks to Darren Zakich. Joshua Bell and Nicole Klo. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, to our uh, Ancient Order of the Cambodian Shriner supporters, Ashley Bragg, Jonathan 30 Acre, Terry Walter, Jim Chamberlain, Scent from Disneyland, and Matt B. from Tropical Imports Limited. Uh, if you want to help us out, if you're enjoying the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash yes, the jungle podcast. Keep us commercial free. That's right. Till we get that sweet Waffle House commercial. Ooh, then all the commercials. All the commercials. <laughs> Just 24-7 Waffle House. That's right. <laughs> I don't know if I, I, I don't know if we should tell this story or not, but I uh, made it through whatever preliminary round to audition to be a tall character at Disneyland. Really? And I thought, why not? Yeah. Why not have some fun? Because they need Darth Vader. They need Chewbacca. They oh, need yeah. Groot. And you had to be, the auditions were for, for men six, three and over. I'm like, done. Yeah. And so I made, they had to send them like pictures and the thing. And they're, okay, your audition day is June 30th. It's the only day for auditions. I'm like, I will be speaking in Portland, Oregon. What else do you got? They're like, it's the only day. I'm like, okay. <laughs> some other time. I go, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. But Those- I, those tall people don't last long. Right? They're tall. Yeah. They can't live that long. They no. Get hit, we get hit by lightning all the time. Dropping like flies. <laughs> That's right. So you don't ever see tall people out in the field. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I thought it'd be fun to do that job and yeah. tell no one yeah. until I saw somebody I knew. Oh, that'd be And then fun. I would go hassle them. I thought yeah. that would be... Because when I worked there in 96, uh, I was working at Cal State Fullerton. I was, I was a TA. Okay. And I had this one class with one of my students was... Uh, she played all like this. She was Timon and a couple other characters. Oh, wow. And her boyfriend was a skipper. So we were skippers together. Okay. And I knew when she was working in the park, because you'd see Timon and you'd wave and Timon would just look at you and walk away. But if Timon saw you and started running at us, like, oh, yeah, it's Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Timon's on this guy's boat. How odd that she would choose that one skipper's boat to ride. So. How fun would that be? Yeah. So I would have had fun. Messing people. Yeah. Because uh, I went to Universal Studios and they had a guy dressed as Frankenstein. I swear to God, I was taller than him. <laughs> I'm like, why not? And he had like the big platform shoes on. Yeah. Universal's weird, man. They just bust out like, I I would love to find out how many of those characters the general public even recognizes anymore. They got the Marx Brothers wandering around that park. And I know that you would enjoy it. I would get very excited by that. <laughs> But I, I I can't imagine too many kids are like, oh, Groucho Marx. My girls would, both of my daughters know Duck Soup by heart. <laughs> they probably know more about Duck Soup than the guy who plays Groucho Marx at yes, Universal. Yes, I, I, would, I would bet that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a, a story, uh, Kevin Lively, uh, Skipper worked with former Imagineer, 
um, when they were doing the Crystal Skull movie, he was yeah. a skipper and they had an Indiana Jones guy mm-hmm. run around and they did stunt oh, yeah. stuff. By the and, way, I'm sorry to interrupt. What, what? Have you seen the new Indiana Jones I face character? Not. It oh, no. looks like a 19 year old boy that uh, happened to slightly dress like Indiana Jones walking around the park. Really? Like, it's pathetic. Huh. Yeah. I've never seen somebody who looks less like Indiana Jones. Really? Be- we all looked more like Indiana Jones in our uh, Jungle Cruise outfits yeah. than this guy looks like Indiana wow, they Jones. they should have hired Michael Mulligan. Right? That boy. C- come on now. Right? Yeah. Cosplay Michael Mulligan. You got to right pay that extra money for all that good lookingness. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and heaven forbid if he sings, you'll be swooning. <laughs> Holy crap. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm I had to go on a little side I'm rant. super straight, but you know, he's a good looking man. He's going to leave it at that. Any We're, port in a storm. Any port in a storm. <laughs> oh, so, 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 so Kevin Live is on the, on the boat coming to the dock and he sees the Indiana Jones guy running by and he's like, hey, Professor Jones, what is our homework for next week? And the guy goes, what? <laughs> so he, he said, so the guy uh, backstage, the guy's like, what was that joke you did? He's like, well, because he's a professor. And he goes, he is? He's like, haven't you seen the movie? Like, you yeah, have, but didn't know Indiana Jones was a professor. What? And he goes, because there was another one, another, he goes, that was like a jerk, but he played lying. He goes, hey, professor, what should we read? He goes, I'll read you know, Smith chapters five and seven. You're going to fail the test next week. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. He goes, so one guy played along with it, and the other guy had no clue about uh, Indiana Jones. Like, how could you play the role and not have that backstory? I always loved, that was always one of my favorite parts about uh work and jungle uh is when you're in the break room of boat storage back there yeah and everybody that was on stage will eventually make their way back to boat storage yeah i always loved uh when the band that used to play the little uh, steel drum band oh uh-huh they would come back and they disappear for a bit and they'd come back and i've never smelt more marijuana <laughs> in my life yeah they were ripped <laughs> and probably just loving life playing steel drums above adventureland <laughs> <laughs> yes, them, them, and the pan flight, pan pipe group from Peru. Oh yeah, half their music was recorded. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, one of the leads might have been Jerry York. One of the leads told me, "Oh yeah, this song. They're not even playing." And we walked up there, and you could tell they weren't even playing. They were just pretending. He's like, half the songs they're really playing, half are just recorded when they get bored. Wow. Or if they're way too high to drum, they just fire up the they tape. They just for... fire up the tape, and it, that's why it's upstairs. It's still called the band loop to this day. Wow. Uh, they would be way too wasted, so they weren't really always performing. How fun! Yeah, did Good I tell you them. my my favorite backstage story? This one is not appropriate for children. Okay, so it has a swear word in it that begins with B. Okay, and ends ends in an H. Yeah, I was gonna say it ends in itch, but you know what I'm talking <laughs> about. So backstage, um, this, this is how like slow my brain is today. I was trying to think of like an, an innocuous word that started with that and ended with that, and I failed. No, it's the it's the bitch. <laughs> so, so turn it off for the next few minutes for the story. So, because it's going to ruin the magic hardcore. So, he's hanging out backstage with some other skippers, and you see Aladdin hanging out, and he's like, "Have you guys seen Jasmine?" And we're like, "No." He's like, "Gah!" And he was so pissed. And you see her come like way down boat storage. He's like, "Hurry up, you bitch!" <laughs> and she's like, "Shut up!" And she they're they're yelling at each other. Yeah, they've been married for a while at this point. So, okay, uh, <laughs> in the movie, right? I guess in the movie, yes. <laughs> so. So they're they're yelling. They clearly hate each other. As they walk to the to the curtain, they hold hands and look at each other and smile, and then they <laughs> skip out on stage. Oh, wow! And the three of us were just like, "Did we just hear a Aladdin called Jasmine a bitch?" I would and, have given anything to see that. Wow! They were they were not happy with each other. And then they <laughs> hold hands and the best part was holding hands and skipping out together. <laughs> I was like, no, what I want to know. That's a that's a that's a that's a that's a. A relationship that had gone sour and they still had to work together. Whole new world of Come bitch. on, baby, be great. I'm Aladdin. Your jazz will be like the dream couple. And six <laughs> months later, she's like, I wish you were dead. <laughs> You're a face character at a theme park. Why am I dating you? Street rat. Yeah, right? <laughs> it never worked. Street rat and a princess. Now for the most dangerous part of our show, the return to civilization. If you've enjoyed the show and want to show some support while also getting some adventurously good extras, visit patreon.com slash the jungle podcast. Also, if you could be so kind as to follow the lads on Instagram, I know they'd be thrilled. At Dr. Skipper Marley and at the dot Trevor dot Kelly. See you hip skips next time in the jungle. <laughs>